Hey there guys, Mr. Mice is here and we're looking at uh, Lesson 1-3-C Curve Sketching Formula. So just a formula for curve sketching and um, this is sort of pre-calculus stuff here and then we'll get into how we're going to use this stuff later on for calculus. But it's really good to know um, basic ideas on how to sketch graphs to get an idea of what they look like. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to find the domain, the vertical asymptotes, and the end behavior. So the domain, we're going to want to factor the denominator here. And we know that x can't be 0 and x can't be 2. Our vertical asymptotes are at the same spots. So x equals 0 and x equals 2 are our vertical asymptotes. And our end behavior is... Um, our end behavior is going to be our basically our horizontal asymptote. So do we have a horizontal asymptote? We do, since the top has a power that's big, that's smaller than the bottom, we know that the horizontal asymptote is zero. So I'm going to have um, the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is equal to zero. And the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is equal to zero. For the next one here, uh, our domain is going to be all values that x is not equal to uh, negative 3 because the denominator can't be 0. And our vertical asymptote is values x equal 3. Our end behavior here is since the top is bigger than the bottom here, x squared, x cubed, we don't have vertical asymptote or horizontal asymptotes. So we need to know what's happening on each side of these. <clears throat> As x approaches infinity, this is going to be positive, this is going to be positive, they're all going to be positive, so we're going to go to infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, um, this is going to be always positive, but the top is going to be negative, so that's going to give me a negative infinity. All right. So last one here, um, our domain here is going to be that x cannot be equal to 2 and x cannot be equal to negative 2. And then we're going to simplify these out here. So we're going to have a hole in the graph, right? So we're going to have we're going to put down our new function x plus four over x plus two, our simplified function. Our vertical asymptotes are going to be now at x equals negative two only. We don't have to worry about that one because that is where our hole is. Our hole. Once we plug in two in here, we're going to get six over uh, four, which is going to give us three halves. So that's our hole, two comma three halves. And our end behavior, the limit as x approaches infinity is our horizontal asymptote. Again here, since the powers are equal, our horizontal asymptote is the coefficients of those. So if you want to remember how to do our horizontal asymptote, it's in the previous video. Horizontal asymptotes and uh, limits to infinity. All right, let's take a look at my formula for graphing these, um, sketching these graphs. We want to do each of these steps here if we can. So I'll demonstrate that here with the following examples. So first one here, this is a polynomial. The domain is all real numbers. Our y-intercepts is when the x value is equal to 0. So we're going to get, right, so this is, uh, we're going to get 0 comma 0, right? The origin, because when we plug in 0, we're going to get 0. Our x-intercepts is going to, we're going to set each of these equal to 0 to find our x-intercepts. So we're going to have x equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals negative 2. Our end behavior here is going to go, um, okay, so this, you have to remember polynomials. We have a 2, 3, we have a 4th degree polynomial. So we're going to have um, y is going to go to positive infinity and y is going to go to positive infinity when x goes to positive infinity and when x goes to negative infinity. Now, this is not really limit form, but it gives you an idea of how to graph this. So we're going to plot our points. Um, negative 2 our x-intercepts. And we know it's going to go up like this. We know it's going to go up like this. And then if you remember from a previous video from pre-calculus, it bounces off that by multiplicity and comes this way and through. Okay, so that's a, a sketch of the curve. All right, let's take a look at the next one here. Um, first of all, we have to find the domain. And the domain, again, is where all the denominator cannot be 0. So at x not equal to 0, x not equal to 1, and x not equal to 3. Now we're going to change this by simplifying. And notice here we can cancel one of these out with here. We can get rid of one of these here. And we're going to end up with uh, x minus 1 times x plus 3 cubed 
all over x times x minus 3 squared. Our vertical asymptote now is going to be at x equals 0 and x equals 3 because we're using this function. We have a hole. We have a hole here because we canceled out that x minus 1 on the bottom. So our hole is going to be at the point 1. And we have to plug in 1 here. And notice here if we plug in 1, we're going to get 0 on top. So it's going to be 1 comma 0 is going to be my hole. My x-intercepts here um, is the top. We're looking at just the numerator. And our x-intercepts is going to be at x equals 1 and at x equals negative 3. Our y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. Well, x can't be 0, so we're not going to have any y-intercepts, right? So none. All right, our end behavior is going to be our horizontal asymptote. Well, here, notice here we have 3, 4. The highest power is 4. The highest power down here is 3. So we don't have any horizontal asymptotes. Um, but we do know because this function is has a four and a uh, four and a three on the bottom that we're probably going to go um, negative infinity out this way, and then positive infinity out this way, and we can just kind of think about that when we plug in. If we plugged in a really really large number on the bottom, um, we're going to get a positive and a positive, so it's going to go up. If we plugged in a really large negative number on the bottom, we're going to have a positive here, but a negative here. And a negative here and a negative here, which is a negative divided by a, I'm sorry, a positive, because negative times a negative. So we have a positive divided by a negative, which is going to end up being negative. I know that was a lot to deal with in a short amount of time. Uh, but basically, it's going to go, um, it's going to go down this way and then up that way. Okay. So let's go ahead and graph the best we can. Uh, we have our at, our values here that we know. We do know we have a vertical asymptote at 3. We also know that we have a vertical asymptote at 0. And we know that this vertical asymptote is going to be odd. So we're going to go up towards it this way, down this way, because we know that the aim behavior goes like that. Uh, we know that, that this uh, asymptote is even, because it's squared here. So since this is odd, we've got to go down this way and then up this way. And then even means we're going to go like that, and probably like this somehow. Okay, this is so this is just a sketch of the curve. All right, last one here. Don't want to make this video too long, but this is a lot of information. We have x plus 1 over square root of x minus 4. So this one, we're going to find the domain again. Now, this domain is a, uh, a quadratic in the square root. So this domain is going to go from negative infinity to negative 2 and then from 2 to infinity right because this can't be anything between negative 2 and 2 because otherwise it'd be too small and it makes it make a, a square root negative which doesn't works right so this has to be big enough to make it a positive square root uh, there are no holes so we say none the y-intercept is we don't have any y-intercept so we say none the vertical asymptotes are going to be at 2 and negative 2, right? Because this still can't be 0 in the denominator. The x-intercept, well, we don't have any x-intercept. Even though we can set this equal to 0 to find the x-intercept, we get negative 1, which is not in our domain interval, so it doesn't even matter. Our end behavior now um, is going to go, well, look at this. We have a square root of x squared. So if we square root the x squared, not considering the negative 4, what do we end up with? We end up with an x here, right? And an x here. So the horizontal asymptote is 1. So we're going to have a horizontal asymptote of 1 here. y equal 1. Um, we're not going to really use a starting point, even though we can. I'm going to show you what we can do with that starting point. Okay. So uh, we do have a negative 2 as our asymptote. Oops. Yeah, right there. It's a horrible asymptote, guys. Um, and we do know that we have a horizontal asymptote here at 1. And we have a horizontal asymptote here at negative 1. I'm sorry. This is a plus or minus 1 for my horizontal asymptote. And the reason for that is, think about this. If I go as x gets negatively larger, right, negative infinity, 
this is going to make whatever big negative number here positive. So the bottom is going to remain positive, but the top is going to be negative. So I'm going to go out to negative 1. This is going to be positive, but this is going to be positive when I go out to positive 1. So I've got actually two, two horizontal asymptotes. So I know that this curve is going to be somewhere in here and somewhere out here. All right, so that's a fairly quick way of just getting a good idea of what a graph looks like. We'll have some calculus techniques to get us actually closer to a better graph. All right, there you go, guys. I'm done.